Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to correct a color cast using Luminar Neo. Now, most often, if you have an image that has the white balance off, it will be too yellow like this image or too blue like this image, but you're really not limited to yellow or blue. You're color cast could be red, green, cyan, magenta, pretty much any color. What I'm going to show you should work in most situations. Now, speaking of the colors I mentioned, I want to quickly just go over to this little chart I made. You can see at the top I have RGB and directly below that I have CMY. These are two common color spaces that you've probably seen or have heard about. The RGB color space is often referred to as an additive color space, and the CMY color space is often referred to as a subtractive color space. And the way I have them laid out here on this image is I have red directly above cyan, green directly above magenta, and blue directly above yellow. The reason why I laid it out this way is because Cyan is the subtractive complement of red. Magenta is the subtractive complement of green. And yellow is the subtractive complement of blue. What this implies is, for example, if you have blue light and you add yellow light to it, you'll end up with white light. Same thing for green and magenta. If you mix those two colors lights together, you'll get white light and the same thing for red and cyan. And what this means is we could easily correct color casts when we know this. And that's what I'm going to show you next. Before I do, I do have a favor to ask. If you value my content on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and remember to click that little bell so that you get notifications of when I post new videos. All right, let's go to this image first, which is too yellow, although you could argue that it's too brown. But as far as photography is concerned, it's actually too yellow, and I'll prove it to you in a moment. I want to show you my entire workflow because I want to show you where you would fit this in in your workflow for it to be most effective. Now, the first thing I would do, if needed, is reduce noise. And this was shot at relatively high ISO, so there is some noise. So I'm going to immediately go to Noiseless Raw. It's recommending the middle adjustment. So I'll click on middle and let it do its thing. And once it does actually remove the noise, then it will kind of zoom in and it will show me that it removed the noise. It did a good job, so I don't need to tweak anything. So that's good. The next thing I would do if needed, is crop and or straighten the image. Now, I do actually want to crop this image, but I'm going to actually leave it uncropped because I want to show you how we're going to remove this color cast over the entire image. The next thing I would do, if needed, is adjust white balance. And obviously, we need white balance adjusted. So, the way you probably think you would do that is go to Develop Raw, go down to Color, and then adjust the color temperature. What I do is something different. Instead, I go to curves. And you'll notice with curves, we have an RGB curve. Let me close this down. We have this RGB curve, right? But then you have these color curves as well, red, green, and blue. And you may be wondering, why are these here? Well, they're here for a few reasons. And one of those reasons is you could correct a color cast because I mentioned as far as blue and yellow is concerned, they're complements to each other. And if you have an image that is too yellow, if you add blue to it, you'll make white. So basically, you'll eliminate that yellow color cast. Now, the way any of these uh, color curves work, that is red, green, or blue, is if you put a point in, in it anywhere and push up on the curve, you'll add that color. If you pull down, you'll add its subtractive complement. So if I go to the blue curve and I put a point right in the middle, I want to add blue to eliminate the yellow. So I would push up on this. And you'll notice as I push up, the yellow magically disappears just like that. How easy that is. Now, as far as my workflow is concerned, the next thing I would do if needed is adjust tone. And I am going to do that, but I am going to crop now. 
So I'll go to the crop tool. I'm going to keep the original ratio. I want to just get in tighter on the lizard's head. So we'll bring it down to maybe like that. And we'll click apply. Now I'll adjust tone. And you may notice that when you adjust tone, you'll start to bring back the color cast. So you have to be just aware of that. And if you do, you just go back down to the curve and just push it up. In this case, add more blue to it and you'll be able to take care of it. So I'll go to the develop raw. I'll go to light first. I look at like the brightest part of an image like right in here and I'll take highlights down and I'll try to just get some detail pop in and you'll actually notice it kind of pops in and then to me that's a good adjustment. Same thing for the shadows. I'll look at a darker area and I'll just open up the shadows until I see some detail pop in and then that's that adjustment. The next thing I'll do is go to blacks and whites. And the way I like to get a white and black point is to tap the J key. When you tap the J key, you'll turn on the clipping indicators. And you'll know the clipping indicators are on when you have little dots up here in the histogram. When they're off, tap the J key again. You'll notice those little dots disappear. So I'll tap the J key, get those white dots up there and I'll move the white slider to the right. Now this is a pretty dark image. I may not clip highlights at all, but if I did, I would get red on the screen. That's indicating that I'm blowing out the highlights. Same thing for blacks uh, with the clipping indicators on, move this to left. And if I go too far, I'll get blue on the screen. That means I'm crushing the shadows. If you crush the shadows or if you blow out the highlights, that means you won't have any detail there at all. If you print it, the highlight area would have no ink on it at all. And the the shadow area would just have black ink. And for wildlife images, I usually don't like to clip either. So I like to have detail kind of everywhere. So for this, I just eyeball it and that looks pretty good. So I'll turn off the clipping indicators by tapping the J key. Now you may notice after adjusting tone, it's a little bit yellow again. So I should go down to curves and I should push this maybe up just a little bit. Now, one thing about uh, Luminar Neo, it has a specific tool in the light section called Smart Contrast. I've noticed that if you turn Smart Contrast up, you'll bring back the uh, color cast all the time. To, you'll see. So I avoid Smart Contrast at all, um, all the time, if I, especially if I have an image that has a color cast in it. So, so far, so good. The next thing I would do in my workflow is I sharpen uh, the image. So in this case here, I'm going to go to details as opposed to sharpness or structure. I like details. And I like to work the top three sliders from the bottom up. So I'll go to large details and just tweak that up a little. Medium details, small details. Overall, I think the image is a touch dark a uh, little bit. Now I have to go back to develop. If you're not familiar with um, Luminar Neo, develop raw is only shows up on raw files. And once you adjust it, then go to another tool and adjust that other tool. You won't have develop raw anymore. You'll have developed. And if I go here, you'll notice that all the sliders are zeroed out. That's because this is like a whole new tool to access the adjustments I did under develop raw. I need to go to edits then go to develop raw here. And there you could see there are my adjustments. Now, overall, I think I, it, the shadows are just a little too dark. That's all I wanted to do was open those up. So we'll go back to tools and then we'll go down to uh, vignette. I like to add dark vignettes sometimes. And that's it. So that's how I corrected that color cast. There's before and there's after. I have this other image that is too blue. So again, keeping with my normal workflow is I would remove noise if needed. This was shot with the Fujifilm X-T1. The lowest ISO on the camera is 200. And I did shoot this at ISO 200. So I don't need to remove noise. The next thing I would do uh, if needed is to crop and or straighten the image. And I'm going to do that. It is a little bit crooked. And the way I like to straighten an image is I go to the crop tool and I just take my cursor off the right-hand side. You could do it off the left-hand side as well. When you come off the image, you'll get this kind of double arrow. Then click with the left mouse button. I could just click up or down to straighten the image by eye. And that's the way I like to do it. Now I want it more symmetrical. You can see that the center of the image is to the left a little bit and I probably have a little bit too much sky. So I'm going to go to the top left and just pull down until the center of the image is right in the middle of the dock. That's what I want. And then I'll click apply. 
Okay, the next thing I would do um, if needed, well, I mentioned, I didn't mention another thing I do. So every now and then I would um, change the camera profile, but in this case, I'm going to keep the camera profile and I would do that now if needed. But the next thing I would do is uh, adjust white balance. And again, the way I would prefer to do it is instead of going to color and adjusting the color temperature is I'll go to curves. In this case, because it's too blue, I'll go to the blue curve. And remember, if we push up on these curves, we'll get the color of the curve. So we'll get red, green, or blue. But if we pull down, we'll get the subtractive complement. So I'm going to click on the middle and just pull down just a little bit. And you can see how we got rid of that blue. Just as easy as that. Now, I'll go up to light and I'll adjust highlights by pulling those in a little bit. I'll open up the shadows. Then I'll go to blacks and whites, and I'll turn on the clipping indicators by tapping the J key. I'll move white slider to the right. If you know if I go too far, I get that red overlay. That means I'm blowing out the highlights. I'll just back that off. All that dissipates. Same thing for blacks. Leave the clipping indicators on. Move this to left. If I went too far, I'd start to crush the shadows. Sometimes on my landscape slash cityscape shots, I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit. But on this image, I don't think it looks right. So I'm just going to open those up a little more. It looks pretty good. And I didn't reintroduce the blue, so, so far, so good. Now, uh, the next thing I probably should do, and I should have did it on the other image I just forgot, is go to optics and fix the optics there. Let it apply those. Then I would go to details. And with details, again, I like to work the sliders from the bottom up. I'll move, oops, I'll move large to the right a little bit. Medium. Small. And then I'll finish it off with a vignette, a dark vignette, like that. That's that. And so there's before, and there's after. There's before, and there's after. So there's how I remove a color cast using Luminar Neo. And you got a glimpse of my workflow. Now, as far as my workflow is concerned, it's as the name implies, my workflow. I'm not suggesting that it's the only way you should edit an image. I show you my workflow and give you my reasonings of why I do things in specific order, in a specific order, to just give you ideas. And hopefully you could come up with a workflow of your own that works for you. So thank you. Oh, one thing I should add. I could see this little blue here. I still have the clipping indicators on. I often do that. I forget to turn them off. So remember to tap the J key again to turn off the clipping indicators. So that's it. That's how you would remove a color cast using Luminar Neo. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.